Thank you very much, Mr. Weprin, for joining us here on Vasis Nias. Uh, whatever people say about Anthony Weiner, there's no question that New York, in fact, the whole country, lost one of its strongest advocates for Israel. It could very well be that Mayor Koch, when he endorsed your Republican opponent, he did so because of his perception that your opponent might be a stronger candidate for Israel than you. What can you tell us about the strength of how you will advocate for Israel? Yeah, well, that, that premise is absurd because, um, you know, I clearly, of any candidate uh, for, for any federal office or even local office, uh, is, is probably the strongest uh, supporter of the state of Israel. And I'll, I'll just give you uh, a little history. And, and uh, if, if Koch's message was uh, to send a message to Obama, the, the best messenger would be someone from his own party who has, has strongly criticized uh, the president uh, on the issue of Israel. And I am that person. I've done that publicly uh, since a number of his statements. I uh, took a very strong stand publicly uh, and, uh, and have been said it so on TV, even on uh, New York One, uh, that his comment about uh, as a starting point for peace negotiations going back to the pre-67 borders uh, was, was wrong, was indefensible, uh, would totally endanger the security of the state of Israel, even just as a starting point. Uh, I argued against giving up Gush Katif. I participated in a number of uh, demonstrations. And when they did give up uh, Gush Katif, and you remember it was kind of adversarial internally uh, in Eretz Yisrael, uh, what happened from the very homes that were given up in Gush Katif, supposedly for peace, uh, they got rockets shot into a greater Israel. Uh, I have my aunt and uncle have made Aliyah over 50 years ago. Uh, they've been living in Israel. I have um, many, many cousins. Uh, in Yerushalayim and, and in other places uh, in Israel, a lot of family there. So uh, I can't think of any candidate for any office, but certainly for Congress of the United States, uh, that would be a stronger supporter for Eretz Israel. Uh, and, uh, and certainly when it comes to uh, Obama's position, I will be one of the strongest advocates in our party against uh, that position. I thought the way he treated uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu and at the White House was outrageous. I've said that. Uh, totally uh, something that uh, you wouldn't treat uh, a country, a leader of a country uh, that was not such a great ally, but uh, there's no question the United States is the, uh, Israel is the only uh, real true ally that the United States has had uh, in that entire region for many, many years. It's the only democracy uh, in the Middle East and, uh, you know, uh, you know, Kalva Homer to treat, uh, you know, the Prime Minister of Israel in that regard was, it was, was, was totally outrageous. And the settlement issue is such a phony issue. These aren't set settlements. These are community. I will be probably uh, Israel's uh, greatest ally in the United States House of Representatives. So you think uh, you could even be more effective than Anthony Weiner was? I think I can. How? I think I have, well, I think I have stronger ties uh, to the state. Um, you know, having been there, um, my politics um, are you know, pretty right-wing when it comes to Israel, Israeli politics, uh, about, uh, you know, not giving up land for peace, uh, you know, being, you know, you know, supporting uh, Judea and Samaria and uh, other holy sites uh, that have been, you know, that the, the, peop the Jewish people, uh, you know, have religious ties to going back thousands and thousands of years. Um, all my uh, kids studied in Eretz Yisrael and yeshivas. Um, I have very strong ties, uh, you know, to yeshivas in Israel, and uh, I think I can be a very strong advocate. A number of members of the district that you're running in are concerned about funding for special needs children and for their education. New York City has had some serious cutbacks on that. What is your position on this and uh, your record on assisting them? Well, in the state, uh, I was a champion in this most recent budget in the assembly. I've only been there a year and a half, but I, in that short period of time, uh, I was the leading advocate for early intervention programs and to um, restore the money that was cut uh, in Governor Cuomo's budget uh, for early intervention for the cutbacks in the reimbursement, which devastated uh, early intervention programs. Uh, I was a champion for that. We didn't get a total restoration. We did get a partial restoration. Uh, I've been working very closely uh, with the providers uh, to see that this new formula that the health department did with uh, shortening the visits uh, was more economically uh, viable and would allow providers to provide the early intervention. You're talking about early intervention. You're talking about zero to three years old at a very, very critical stage uh, in an infant's life, uh, where if you have the proper therapy and the proper intervention at that early stage, you can make such a difference in their lives, and they can live thriving, healthy lives. And if you once you lose that early intervention, it's gone forever, 
and the dam damage can be permanent. So I've been a strong advocate in the city council. Uh, I chaired the finance committee for eight years, and one of my pet projects was funding for autism, uh, for after-school programs, for summer programs, uh, and I provided um, a lot of that autism money uh, to Orthodox Jewish programs, and uh, I even actually got criticized by my colleagues for most of the money going to Jewish organizations. Um, OHEL was a major uh, provider in, in the training uh, for autism and, and a lot of the programs. Uh, most of the JCCs in the city uh, were very involved and, and got uh, funding. Shema Kolenu, which is a special needs school in Borough Park, uh, got a lot of that funding, and, and I was a strong advocate uh, at the expense of being criticized by some of my colleagues uh, in budget negotiations in the council. And my argument for them was, you know, they service everybody, even though they may have uh, an Orthodox Jewish affiliation. Uh, programs are open to everyone, uh, and these are very good providers. They have a history uh, of providing services, and uh, you shouldn't worry about, uh, you know, whether it has a Jewish affiliation or an Orthodox affiliation. Some people uh, are not very happy that an end run was done around the people concerning this legislation that redefines the parameters of marriage. They're not happy that it passed, and they're not happy that you supported it. People are upset that the behind-the-scenes meetings actually violated New York State's open meeting laws. They're upset that normal Senate voting procedures were suspended, which prevented opposing senators from speaking up. And they were upset that this bill wasn't sent to the appropriate committees before being put up to the full Senate for voting. There was also no three-day review period. People were upset at the promises of large campaign contributions to Republicans who would switch. I believe our own mayor did that, and people were fuming at it. Some people even described the whole event as the day democracy died. They're particularly concerned that you, as an observant Jew, has taken this position. So uh, I'd like to hear what you have to say about this. And also, do you uh, support a future plebiscite from the people itself as to whether this legislation should remain? Well, I am, too, particularly concerned with um, procedural violations uh, if they were done. Uh, the violation that you referred to uh, actually occurred in the other house, in the state senate, not in, in the state assembly. Uh, and I think there should be investigations. I think there should be... Uh, the process uh, should be looked into. I think uh, from all sides' point of view, uh, people have to feel that there was a fair process, uh, that the vote took place, um, you know, without coercion, uh, you know, similar to like when you're in a court of law, you have to state that you're taking a position uh, or any kind of plea in any kind of criminal case uh, without any uh, threat of coercion or any uh, undue influence. So there's no question I would be open to any kind of, uh, you know, investigation looking into uh, a procedural issue. But again, uh, you're talking about a process that took place uh, in the other house, in the state senate, uh, where it actually made a difference on whether this particular bill became a law or not, because it had passed already in the house that I am in uh, years before I even got there uh, on, on, on numerous occasions. Uh, in the case of the bill, and I know some people were upset about uh, my vote, it did at the same time, uh, protect, protect uh, and put in provisions for religious organizations, which specifically in law protected religious organizations from being sued uh, for not willing to perform um, mar same-sex marriages, as well as uh, adoption agencies uh, that did felt it violated their uh, religious beliefs, whether it be Orthodox Jewish or Catholic or other religious institutions. Uh, from uh, giving, uh, adopt, you know, conducting adoptions or um, facilitating uh, adoptions among same-sex couples if that violated uh, their religious beliefs. So there were protections uh, in that bill uh, that, uh, that was eventually uh, voted on. Would you support a uh, plebiscite allowing the people uh, to vote on this issue in the future? Or uh, this wasn't done by the people. This was done by the representatives. No, I understand. You know, you could actually technically make that argument about a lot of pieces of legislation because, you know, it's, a, it's an old argument about whether we should have representative government or whether we should have, uh, you know, voting by referendum. Actually, the state of California uh, has the public referendum system to replace a lot of laws. Uh, so, uh, you know, I do think there are times when uh, it is appropriate to have public referendums. Uh, in the case when I was in the city council and term limits in the city, 
another time uh, when I think um, there was uh, the falling of democracy uh, was when the mayor and the city council uh, overturned term limits uh, once to, after the voters had voted twice by public referendum for the eight years in the city council. And I was actually one of the leaders against it, against changing uh, term limits by uh, legislation because the public had already spoken. See, I think it's wrong if there is a public referendum on something and the people have spoken so clearly then to overrule that referendum by legislation. The, re the referendum you're talking about is a tricky situation uh, because um, we have uh, a legislative environment. Had there been a public referendum before, I think there would be a much stronger argument uh, that the legislature should not be acting to overturn uh, what is the, the will of the public. So, Okay. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate this opportunity to expose your views to uh, the Vasis Nias uh, readership, and uh, we wish you much luck in the uh, September 13th. 13th election.